You perfected your wardrobe. What about the stuff not everybody gets to see? If you've been settling for store-bought underwear five packs, we got something that's going to change your life for the better. Talking about me undies. Now, what is me undies? Oh, just seriously soft, feel-good undies delivered right to your door. They're designed in LA and made from sustainably sourced micromodal, a fabric three times softer than cotton. Softer than soft, luxurious undies come in an ever-changing selection of classic colors, bold shades, and adventurous patterns, so you can tailor your undies to your personal style. And you know what? You can save time and money with a monthly subscription. I've got a few pairs of me undies. Man, they are real comfortable. Every time I work my way through the laundry and I got those me undies there that I'm going to put on my body, ooh, I get real excited because they are comfy. If you're not ready for a subscription, you, that's okay. You can save. This is because me undies is offering you 20% off your first pair. Just use your special URL, meundies.com slash doughboys and get 20% off your first pair. Go ahead, revamp your underwear drawer. You deserve it. I know you. You deserve it. Do something nice for yourself. Try me undies. You never spoil yourself. You're too worried about taking care of other people. You got to take care of you. You're the protagonist of your own life. Make sure you are comfortable. Go to MeUndies.com slash Doughboys. That's right. MeUndies.com slash Doughboys. Hey, guys. Scholar Brothers here along with Daniel Van Kirk. Yep. Uh, and on this week's Dumb People Town, we have a very special guest. He's with us right now. Say hello, Rob Cordry. My name is Rob Cordry. Oh, Ooh, thanks for coming out from under the blanket. Yeah. This episode's... Yeah, I'm going to go back under now. No, no, no. Stay for just a second. No, no, no. Come on, Rob. nice under here. Dumb no, 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 people no, no, no. doing dumb things on this show. We break it all down for you, and Cordry is en fuego. He's up everybody's ass, and now you'll know what that means. Yeah. Yeah. You'll yeah. know what that means when By you listening. listen to brings, the episode. He brings the flotto. He brings the flotto, guys, so check it out. Feral Audio. Here comes a new challenger. As ordered by the Commissioner of the Tournament of Champions, a battle is now waged between a relative newcomer from New York, which just last week opened its first LA outpost, and the tournament's Cinderella story, the Maryland-based chain that clawed its way both into the Golden Plate Club and the semi-soft finals of Munch Madness 2016. This week on an emergency Doughboys one-quarter portion minisode, our burger brawl is five guys versus Shake Shack. Let's go! Welcome to Doughboys, the podcast about chain restaurants. I'm Nick Weiger alongside the Spoon Man, Mike Mitchell. How you doing, Mitch? Doing well. You sound like uh, an elementary school principal talking to his kids over like the like intercom. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to get them hyped for uh, the winter formal. It, it, but you can tell that you're not hyped at all. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I, this tournament has taken has sapped a lot out of me. I think it's it's taken a lot out of both of us. Yeah, I think we're. At our the closest end. to quitting this podcast for real, <laughs> which is really saying something. It really is. Yeah. It's close. Well, uh, I just want to say, uh, how to how to Spoon Nation. What's up, Spoon Nation? Man, Mike Mitchell. Oh, a little me in there. That's nice. Hmm, don't like that. A little Weiger in your drop. That's from Rocco T. Rocco, I don't know what your Twitter address is, but look look up Rocco T on Twitter <laughs> and follow every one of them. Yeah, just do a global search for everyone with that username, uh, that first name. Thanks, and initial. Rocco. That was a that was a good that was a nice classic. One. Yeah, I, I think that was it. my all time favorite. Um, all right, I have a, oh. b- before before we get into this mini sode, uh-huh. I have a couple of things I want to discuss. And what is what is going on? Oh my on? god! <laughs> Evan Susser, <laughs> tournament commissioner, oh my god. just just barged into the studio unannounced. He's wearing a suit. I'm going to take and he's a picture. Playing no chance in hell. The Vince McMahon theme song. <laughs> Appreciate you catching that. <laughs> oh my All god! Right. I've never seen someone invite themselves to a podcast. This is a true surprise. <laughs> uh, and Dustin has to rush in and fix things because it, maybe he wasn't planning on a guest. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, I'm going to read a brief statement and then make a special announcement. 
Aren't you supposed to be writing movies? (laughs) (laughs) Gentlemen, I am inspired and pleased to see you both here participating in the mini-sode. Without its integrity, the Tournament of Champions is worthless. While I trust both of you to play by the rules tonight, considering the many scandals that have already plagued Munch Madness, I have determined that this mini-sode requires officiating. While I could officiate, (laughs) as commissioner, I do not believe it is appropriate for me to overly assert myself into the podcast. Yeah, okay, well, too late. (laughs) (laughs) That's why I'm bringing on a special referee for this mini-sode. Please welcome special referee. What? Past Doughboy's guest. Maddie Smith. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Wait, so Maddie's the rock, but he's a referee? Yeah, he's playing the rock theme music, but he's wearing a, a footlocker uniform. I'm going to get a shot of Maddie in the chair. Oh, my God. What a terrible start to the podcast. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, I want a good, clean match. Uh, I will go over the rules of the Tournament of Champions before we begin. Rule number one, oh eligible entrants must have previously been reviewed on the podcast, has been removed as a rule. Rule two, burgers will be judged on a scale of one to ten basketballs for each of the following categories. One, presentation. Two, buns slash condiments. Three, taste, which sort of means burgers... Or whatever. <laughs> Three, side stay on the sidelines, drink you're in the stink. Four, we are judging the best burgers, not the best burger. What? You said it. Five. Yeah. I think that is a rule we established early on. Oh, okay. We're saying, like, that does this restaurant overall have the best burger? We're not yes. trying to say, like, okay. this individual burger is the best. All right, yeah, that was a regular rule. Five. The basketball scores do not matter. And <laughs> burgers will be determined by which burgers we would like to send to the aliens. Now, gentlemen, do we have an alien? Oh, we didn't settle on one in advance. Um, mm, that's a good I alien. We riff it out. Uh, you know, I think, I think we're due for something in the family arena. What? Well, I, I mean, I feel no like we've family been... listens to this podcast. No, I think we're like well, let's do like a lighthearted family alien, like an <laughs> ET, but not exactly any. Let's do Mac from Mac and Me. <laughs> okay, God the alien is Mac from Mac and Me. I, okay. When this was a McDonald's Mac from movie. Mac and Me, who won't? It won't matter. He'll eat both burgers and steam will come out of his ears or whatever the fuck Max <laughs> thing is. All yeah. I know is that movie ends. That movie has an insane final scene. Look it up. Look up the climactic scene from Mac and Me if you haven't seen it. And it's just him and his family, his alien family, and they all look like shit. They're just like the <laughs> shittiest looking animatronic aliens. <laughs> by like by 1980 standards, they looked horrible. Like they were unconvincing then. And they're all, like, swearing the oath of citizenship. Delaying the match. The alien is <laughs> oh Mac God. from Mac and me. <laughs> all right. Gentlemen, look it up. The contestants, the competitors are Shake Shack and Five Guys. That's right. All right. Let's get it on. Hey, uh, can I just do a quick side question? Yeah. Uh, how long did Evan Susser run to get in here? Because uh, I could barely hear what he was saying over his heavy breathing. <laughs> to start the... They hit us. They hit us well. They hit us out of the building. <laughs> Well, Maddie, I like you. I like having you in here. Over Happy Susser. to have you here, Maddie. Well, we'll see. Uh, always welcome. And Susser will be uh, writing Sonic in the uh, in the other room. I'm sure <laughs> as we do this, I'm sure he's uh, working out some great banter between uh, Rouge the Bat and uh, Big the Cat that we'll soon see on the silver screen. Hmm. Um, perfect. Uh, those are the perfect examples to show that you're autistic. <laughs> 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 All right. Before we get to these combatants, and mm-hmm. Maddie, I'm glad you're here to regulate so things don't go right like they did in our most recent episode. Uh, John Gemberling was here. Uh, I love John Gemberling. He was a great guest. You and him united against In N Out Burger, uh, Mitch, and chose yes. Carl's Jr. Hardee's to advance over In N Out into the finals. That's um, true. And I have a couple of things to say about this. So. People reached out to Doughboys on social media on a few topics. Uh-huh. One was, real quick, uh, in defense of honey mustard, I used the quote, better to live a day as a lion than 100 years as a sheep, and was unsure of its source. A number of people let me know that the, the source was uh, Italian fascist dictator Benito Mussolini. So I apologize for invoking Mussolini, <laughs> one third of the Axis that fought against the Allies in World War II. Very apropos. <laughs> but... 
But the other thing was, mm-hmm. a number of people sent this, and the first person I saw it from was at the J. McInnes. There was a Business Insider article that coincidentally went out the day that our podcast debuted. Yeah. Talking about the CEO of Carl's Jr. Hardee's and his goal to replace his human workforce with robots. I'm going to read from this article in part because it's insane. So I, far, so far, this sounds cool. I want to try it, CEO Andy Puzder told Business Insider of his automated restaurant plans. We could have a restaurant where you order on a kiosk, you pay with a credit or debit card, your order pops up, and you never see a person. Puzder's interest in an employee-free restaurant has been driven by rising minimum wages across the U.S. So here's the thing. Mm -hmm. I know that a lot of food service employees are poorly compensated. A lot of them don't make a living wage. Coincidentally, in now Burger does pay its employees very fairly and provide benefits. It's a a model franchise. But at least we need a modicum of respect from management for its frontline employees who keep the ship right, who keep the business going. And what we're seeing from Andy Puzder is an absence of humanity. He is literally saying he wants to replace the human workers, the lifeblood of his company, with robots in some sort of fast food version of a Terminator-style apocalypse? Hey, I I say do one better, replace everyone with robots except for me. (laughs) Leave me on a planet full of robots. And if we replaced you with a robot, it would have more emotion, I think. (laughs) Mitch, you on a planet uh, full of robots as the only human, you would still fuck the same amount. (laughs) You would fuck the same amount of people in that scenario. Um, But let me say this. Shouldn't Maddie blow a fucking whistle on you? What the fuck? No, all I'm right. a lot. No, this is fair. This is fair. This is a preamble before we get into uh, okay, the, all abs- right, fine. A, the actual valuation. It's all a waste of time. Anyway, go ahead. I can't amend the previous episode's scores because it would have no effect. It was two to one mm. in favor of Carl's Jr. Hardee's over In N Out Burger. But in light of this new information, in light of this sociopathic megalomaniac who's in charge of the Carl's Jr. Hardee's franchise, I am going to amend my first round score when Jess McKenna was our guest and we ruled that Carl's Jr. Hardee's would advance over Fuddruckers. So, it is my opinion that because of this development, (laughs) I'm adding a new category, corporate values slash dollar value. What the fuck? And in that category, Carl's Jr. Hardee's gets zero basketballs, which means that Fuddruckers is my pick in the oh first round. God. Fuddruckers advanced to face in and out Burger, and by default, in and out Burger wins by one score, by one victory, one vote for, for in and out Burger to go to the Aliens, and zero to Fuddruckers. In and out Burger is going to the finals. Carl's <laughs> Jr. Hardy's eliminated. <laughs> Commissioner is... Commissioner Evan Susser has well, walked in here. I'm, I'm glad I'm here. Obviously, uh, this is why we have an officiant here. This obviously does not stand. It's insane. Um... <laughs> Maddie, blow the whistle, for God's sake. She dressed well, up. This is an unprecedented move. But uh, I'm willing to allow that uh, treatment of employees and morality fall under Rule 2, Subsection 3, taste, which sort of means burgers or whatever. Allowed. So I'm going to allow. <laughs> allowed. Susser tried to take his, what I assume is a snap-on tie-off and fail. <laughs> All right, so... He's Carl's, very upset. in and out Burger, moving to the finals. Carl's Jr. Hardy is eliminated. Also, uh... This is fucked up. Can't, like... Can it be a 2 on one match with Carl's and in and out versus the winner or something? We'll have to see, but uh, as of now, I don't see any any recourse for Carl's Jr. unless uh, Andy Puzner fuck? resigns or renounces his comments. All right, well, if it's Fuddruckers versus in and out I vote in and out so in and out wins. All right, in and out wins Wonderful. Great. And also... Uh, this, what a fucking mess. Also, Carl's Jr. Hardy's out of the Golden Plate Club. You're now going in the dishwasher what until the you clean fuck? up your pack. <laughs> this is insane. This is this is is true garbage. Look, you started this, all right? You've been a troll this entire tournament, and I'm not going to act like King Solomon anymore, trying to be peacemaker. All right, you, you've you've declared that this is uh, this is total war, and so fine, I'll I'll Ugh. do Sherman's march to the sea. Let's win this by any means necessary. Let's talk about Five Guys versus Shake Shack. All right, so at Five Guys, I got the bacon burger. 
Um, you and can't I can't just my- <laughs> move right back into a normal fucking podcast. I got mine all the way, which means it comes with mayo, lettuce, pickles, tomatoes, grilled onions, grilled mushrooms, ketchup, and mustard. Uh, coincidentally, I didn't ask for cheese. Got it anyway. Not too bad, but you know, when I said bacon burger on the menu, bacon burger doesn't have cheese. They delivered cheese. I, I mean, it's just like a, the, if, I, if there was lactose intolerance or something, there would have been an issue. So you know, a, a minor misstep, not a deal breaker. They didn't breaker. add cheese. They did add cheese, and I I didn't so ask didn't, for cheese. Oh wow! Yeah, I ordered the regular bacon burger, which doesn't come with cheese. Also, just a little bit of confusion there. Their menu. Their normal burger size has two patties. Mm-hmm. Their little burger has one patty. But when I ordered the burger, they asked me if I wanted one or two patties. Just clarify that menu. Call it like a double burger and a single burger or something. I mean, it just it just creates some. I mean, you agree, right, Maddie? It's it's you're a man of rule, a man of law. It's 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 a jungle out there. I'm not at liberty to weigh in on the burger. <laughs> All right. Well, I will say, I will say, five guys. Uh-huh. Like I mentioned in my intro, the Cinderella story of this tournament. They've consistently given me an excellent experience. Each of my now three trips, they've had to go through, jump through a lot of hoops in this tournament. This is their third matchup already. Well, and you kind of made Fuddruckers a Cinderella, but then also kind of made In and Out a Cinderella, even though it was the favorite. <laughs> <laughs> it was the number one seed, and like a number one seeds of, of past, like the New England Patriots, it gets a little. Uh, it gets a little uh, help out out of bounds to advance. So, well, if I have to quote Nick Weiger. I'm livid, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, I like Five Guys a lot. Uh, what about you, Mitch? What was your Five Guys experience like? My Five Guys experience, I gotta say, I, I went to the Five Guys on Wilshire Boulevard. What the hell are you doing? Oh, you're taking taking my jacket. jacket off. It's warm in here. Uh, okay. Um, Is that okay, Maddie? Is that within the the bounds? <laughs> I'll allow it. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, God, you had to dress up as a referee. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Maddie. <laughs> <laughs> Taunting the referee. What the hell is this? That's your first yellow card. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> a yellow card? What does that mean? I have to leave? Two yellow cards constitutes a red card, and then you'll be asked to leave. <laughs> he has to leave the studio? What? All right, anyways. Uh, I went to uh, the five guys on uh, Wilshire Boulevard. Uh, I got myself a little bacon cheeseburger. The first time I've had bacon on the five guys burger. Uh, I went all the way. Um, which is when I go all the way, it normally is five guys. <laughs> um, uh, I had mayo, lettuce, so it comes with mayo, lettuce, pickles, tomatoes, grilled onions. I went no mushrooms and then ketchup and mustard, and I added raw onions. Um, and with that, I know I'm just, I know they stay on the, uh, in the drinks or in the stink, but, uh, I got a cherry Coke Zero. Um, Drinks are in the stink. <laughs> what is that? So uh, Are you a half yellow card warning? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> all right, all right. I'll, 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 I mean, my dream is to get kicked off the podcast, <laughs> so uh, hopefully I get a red card at some point. Hopefully that whistle you brought in here isn't as piercing for our listeners as hopefully it is in our, yeah. our earphones. Or Dustin thought it was okay. At least. All right, great. You guys had to plan. Dustin, I got to uh, apologize to our, our producer, Dustin, who's done such a great job. With uh, this entire fucking stupid tournament, <laughs> um, don't give me another half. I'm gonna behave. All right, let me. I'll keep going. Um, so five guys is good. We were tough on it. I changed my rating on five guys before anyone else, and uh, just like how you changed the entire tournament a few seconds ago, um, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah, it was it was a good burger and it was a a nice a nice mix of toppings. I just I still have reservations about it. It's still mm. not my favorite burger. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's the sta- like if it's not going to ever resonate as your favorite, is it really going to be the champion? I still especially just, with such stiff competition. I I still have holdups about the seasoning of that patty. Mm-hmm. Uh, the patty to me is just it's just not that great. And 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 especially when you do the single burger, and I don't feel like this is as big of a problem at other places, but if you do that single burger or the little bacon cheeseburger or any little burger, it, it feels almost like a like a, a salad burger. It, 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 sure. It, the, the toppings can really take over and you don't get as much of the meat. And also, too, like, you know, I'll just say as a default... I don't know about the about making grilled mushrooms part of your default burger. No way. You know, I mean, like, I feel like that's like kind of a a niche item, 
as far as burger toppings go, if we're talking in the, I don't want to get ahead of our, our evaluation of the condiment slash bun mm-hmm. category and under which veggies fall. But yeah, I feel like it's, I, I think you, you were right to simplify things a little bit. <laughs> Getting ahead of a category? Let's a yellow card. Oh, I also got a yellow card now. All right. Um, <laughs> I so made fun of Matty. <laughs> I, wait, hold on a second. I just said I made fun of Matty to get my first yellow card, and I don't even know what you did. I got it. I got ahead. I started talking about the categories before we were ready to start assigning basketball okay. scores. That's I guess true. that was out. I of... think that should be a red card. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just out of here. Yeah. I, All right. I think so. <laughs> um, uh, but let's. Uh, and the bacon I liked. I think they have they have good quality bacon there. What do you What do you think of the bacon, Mitch? I did. I thought the bacon was pretty good. I I, I agree with you. Um, uh, yeah, not 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 bad. Yeah, um, um, a little a little overdone for me, but yeah, uh, but not bad. Tasted tastes decent. I think they're not taking any chances there in terms of foodborne illness because that burger comes out well done. It's yeah. juicy, but it's well done, and that bacon is is pretty crispy. Mm-hmm. Um, so our competitor this week. That's right. Shake Shack. That's which, right. Mitch, you we went together. We also went with uh with current ref uh in front of the podcast, Maddie Smith, and uh, uh in front of the podcast. Evan yeah, I Susser. guess we can describe him as friend of the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, we all went to the, the uh, giant shoehorn who's gotten himself <laughs> into our podcast. <laughs> Like Harley Quinn came late to the uh, late to the Batman franchise, but is now an essential part of the lore. I feel like that's, that's kind right. of that's a that Evan Susser is the Harley Quinn <laughs> of our. <laughs> they have their tits are just as big as each other's. <laughs> All right. Uh, we all went. We went, We took a big group to the Shake Shack, the newly opened Shake Shack in West Hollywood. And I think we went the day after they opened, and mm-hmm. it was an hour-long wait. We waited a substantial amount of time to get in there. Not me, baby. Yeah, you got there late, <laughs> but um, I was there with uh, David Phillips and Joe Saunders. Um, and... Man, what a snooze fest that must have been. <laughs> no, three cool dudes. <laughs> uh, we're a regular wolf pack. I noticed that people behind you in line just started leaving. <laughs> 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 there was a pocket. We're three cool dudes who like Star Wars The Force Awakens, and we have a good time hanging out. Um, oh. <laughs> we were in line. and oh, I'm so uh, sad I was an hour late. <laughs> <laughs> we waited a substantial amount of time. And then when we finally went up there, uh, the ordering experience was pretty smooth. Just, you know, a lengthy queue, but they got our food out in a fairly timely fashion considering how swamped it was. Because there was just a huge, it was an amusement park line. Mm-hmm. It was like, it was like wait, waiting for a Disneyland attraction. Um, I got the Roadside Double, okay. which is a double Swiss cheeseburger with Dijon mustard and onions simmered in bacon and beer. Now, Shake Shack is a chain, but they also try to give a little bit of local <clears throat> flair to each of their uh, their franchises or yeah. company-owned restaurants. I'm not sure exactly what their business model is. Um, and so this one, the Roadside Double, is kind of a California style, not a traditional California style, but kind of a, you know, like a, a some version of a West Coast burger uh, that's unique to the West Hollywood location. You can only get it there. Very tasty. You know, I've, I've certainly had Shake Shack before in New York. I've had their, their normal Shake Shack burgers. Okay. Okay. Um, and uh, this was the, you know, obviously this was basically anyone's first opportunity to get this burger. And, I, I, you know, I like the Swiss cheese. Burger is well cooked. That bun is really soft and good. Um, and, yeah, the beer quality that came across in those onions was really, really, really nice. Um, you know, Impressive just, for such a long wait. Yeah, impressive for such a long wait. Like, I don't, I wouldn't wait for an hour every time, but waiting this time for that experience, I didn't regret it. I wasn't like, oh, this is a bummer. I was like, this is a really, really good burger. It, it was it was delicious. That's the word I'd use. All right. What about you, Mitch? Um, <clears throat> I arrived late, and I came with Maddie and Evan. Um, Maddie was not wearing his referee shirt at the time. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's about to blow the whistle. Oh, phew. All right, thank I'll, you. I'll allow it. <laughs> it's the truth. Uh, and I got the uh, a double Smoke Shack burger, which is a cheeseburger topped with all-natural apple, applewood smoked bacon, chopped cherry peppers, and shack sauce. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, cheeseburger. There was there was cheese on that bad boy. Um, I liked it a lot. I agree with you. The bun was nice and soft. I really enjoyed it. The burger was very well seasoned and juicy. Really, it really is very flavorful. Very flavorful. A great, great burger patty. It's good. It's a really good burger. It almost feels like it shouldn't be in the competition because it's because it almost feels like out of the out of the realm of, of yeah. 
but it, but it, it it counts in the the susser made some rule that i guess we have to follow and uh and and it's in there and and it's really really tasty i i i really i really enjoyed it well i mean this is maybe a thing to evaluate when we get to the the newly created category of corporate value slash dollar value don't whistle me maddie i'm going somewhere with this um do we really have to okay <laughs> we don't we don't have to actually add that category if you don't want um i think it might be fun and i think we might offer some insight but anyway what i was going to say whether or not this is a, an official category, mm -hmm. this burgers these burgers are like eight dollars and ninety nine cents. Like yeah. they're starting to get towards sit down restaurant pricing as opposed opposed to to go fast food pricing. And it's still an order at the counter, um, pick your food up, eat, you know, eat on the go or eat at a table sort of scenario. So it's pretty expensive, but versus Five Guys, it's not that much more expensive because Five no. Guys is on the pr the pricier end as well. So, you know, it, this is definitely at the high end. It might be just outside the realm of what we should maybe be considering or right up to the edge of what we should be considering. But I feel like as compared to Five Guys, it's not a completely unfair fight. They're in a similar price category. I agree with that. I I, I, <clears throat> I think I think I think it's I think they're equally comparable I, I i don't think it's it's too crazy and i feel like i gave you 20 bucks we told nick our orders and he put them in and then uh we got there pretty much as they were coming out it was perfect yeah it worked out nicely i mean not for you and i apologize <laughs> it but, was fine it was no problem but you know the thing with five guys when i'm eating that one of the things that's that sticks out to me the most and it's kind of because they don't melt the cheese as much, at least in my experience with it, mm -hmm. or like the edges of the cheese. But the che the cheese stands out maybe the most overall. This Shake Shack burger is way more cohesive. Mm -hmm. It's just a really, really delicious burger. I'm not knocking Five Guys. I like it. I, I it it is. It's a four four. It's in the Golden Plate Club, unlike Carl's Jr. Somehow, it's it's a really, really great, great burger, and and. and I, I I've changed my tune about it a little bit, especially since the first episode. Me too. I, I've come around. But Shake Shack really goes all out with that beef patty, and 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 it's 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 really great. It's, it's something else. Yeah, it is. It is really an impressive burger experience. I will say that you know, just speak, just speaking of cheese, that 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 double Swiss cheese did get a little gooey, as Swiss sometimes does when it melts. So at this point, let's get to our ratings of each of these chains. Okay. Um, the categories is zero to ten basketballs. Maddie refreshed our memory on earlier. Um, <clears throat> I'll go first. Creativity slash presentation. I'll give five guys. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sloppy. I mean, and it's not super creative. It's good. But it's pretty sloppy. I'm gonna give it six and a half basketballs. Shake Shack. I don't know how creative it is. I guess it's an innovator in the sense, in a franchise sense, is in that it's this super high class burger that's uh, at a you know a, something resembling fast food prices. But the burgers, I guess I don't know. I feel like they're kind of like just esteemed versions of burgers we already know. Okay. So, but the presentation is very nice. They tend to come out looking pretty good. I'm going to give it a score of seven and a half basketballs. Mm -hmm. Condiment slash bun. You know, good condiment slash veggies at Five Guys. I like that you have a lot of those options. I think, you know, customize away however you like it, but I, I'd get those grilled mushrooms out of that all the way if I'm advising them in, on a corporate level. Uh, but uh, I think Five Guys does have good condiments and a pretty good a sesame bun. I'd give it eight basketballs. Shake Shack, ah, oh man, I think they just do it all really well. I'm going to give it nine and a half basketballs. Wow. Um, just everything is very tasty. I think Bur one of our highest basketball ratings so far. A lot of basketballs, yeah. <clears throat> um, uh, burger slash taste. Mm -hmm. Five Guys, it's really tasty. The I'm most not, important category. Yeah, the most important category. And Five Guys delivers in the most important category. It's a tasty burger that I enjoy eating. Nine basketballs. Mm. Um, and against most competitors, that would be a very, very substantial score. But unfortunately, this is going to get Shake Shack, which is just a titan in terms of taste. 10 basketballs for Shake Shack in burger slash taste. And corporate value slash dollar value. Well, I don't know much about the uh, corporate methods of both of these chains. Mm, I this do dumb new category. <laughs> I do know that Shake Shack does responsibly source <clears throat> their beef, and they have like a, you know, no ge no uh, genetically modified organisms or whatever the, uh, whatever the terminology is. No GMOs. Um, but it's very expensive. Five Guys also pretty expensive. 
I'm going to give the edge to five guys in this one. I'm going to say six basketballs to five and a half basketballs for Shake Shack. Um, and we'll wait on which one we're going to send to the aliens. What about you, Mitch? Go ahead. Well, <clears throat> um, I got a cough going this episode. I don't know what's happening. Oh, no. That's fine. I'm fine. You still sick fine. with that Colombian flu? or No, I think the flu's over. I think uh, now just my body is deteriorating from <laughs> this uh, tournament. <laughs> We've done this for so long. Someone sent a picture of you feeding me burgers, and I looked like a big blob. Yeah. Uh, that was maybe the most insulting fan art. <laughs> I, I, I would say Not so, for me. I, I looked very, very trim, but they... I mean, it was... I feel like it was It was, it was. was summing up what's happening on the show. <laughs> and I agree with it. I, I am, I'm sick. I love burgers. I'm eating them so much. This is too much. Yeah, it's th this tournament's too much. You're like the you're like the kid who mom got mom caught you eating a burger you weren't supposed to eat. So she was like, uh, "Go out there and and eat all these burgers." <laughs> and now you're about halfway through that pack of burgers, and you're like, "Oh man, this is excessive." <laughs> you're you're finally. Oh, I'm like that kid. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that kid, that classic yeah, story. Yeah, we know that recognizable <laughs> scenario from all our all of our youths. <laughs> No, it's 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 too much. And except I didn't really eat the burger to begin with. I just kind of got tackled this. I'm going to make a confession too before I get down to my breakdown. I I love John Gemmerling and I thought he was great. I thought the episode was great. I loved the Gemmerling's outcome. fantastic. Love, I love loved the John. outcome of the episode and to do this to his voting uh and his decision is is fucked up. Um but I will say I knew going in, this is hard for me to admit, and I might tear up. Maddie, get the red card ready. Um, I might tear up during this. Just kidding. I will never cry during a Doughboys <laughs> episode. I will only cry because I want it to end, and uh, it never will. Um, Gambling told me that he liked, uh, he really liked Burger King, and he kind of... I kind of got the sense that he didn't love In and Out. Carl's uh, Jr. In and Out, you mean? Or Carl's no, Jr. no. He told me that he loved the Whopper. Oh, he loves the Whopper. Okay, yeah. And then he said that he would have voted Whopper over, over In and Out. He would have voted Burger King over In and Out Burger. That's right. And so I kind of an insane position. <sighs> this is hard for me to say, but I kind of knew that Carl's Jr. was gonna was was gonna win it. You booked a ringer, <laughs> falsifying the outcome of a match. Uh, we're gonna go to review. <laughs> Maddie is Maddie is calling in the commissioner, Evan Susser. Oh Jesus Christ! This charade has officially reached <laughs> the status of debacle. <laughs> okay, they're having some sort of quiet conference. We can't guess. hear what they're saying. Let me guess. Susser is gonna make himself I'm, the I'm, other I'm podcast host. <laughs> I'll do whatever you want. It sounds like it sounds like Susser's. heavy whispering. Okay. okay. All right. We're unclear on what just transpired. Uh, Maddie is back at the microphone. Mike is going to be given 10 seconds in the penalty box. <laughs> 10 seconds of silence starting now. So I just got to fill 10 seconds of dead air while Mitch just sits there and nods mutely. Um, let me just say this. Deflate gate is 100% true. Tom Brady is a cheater. All right. That ends the 10 seconds. <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <clears throat> um... I kind of had a ringer. I agreed with him. Listen, I like that Big Carl better. I do. I really, truly like the Big Carl burger more than I like the In-N-Out burger. I believe you. I'm going to stand by that. I just want... Oh, Jesus Christ. Delay of match. Please uh, stick to the topic <laughs> that we're discussing. And I, I uh, that's trust... going to be another 10 seconds in the penalty <laughs> oh, box. For... God damn it. Beginning now. Here, Mitch, do you just want to uh, flash me the number of basketballs that you want? For each category, that might be more efficient if you're going to keep getting in the penalty box. All right. Mike, you're let out of the penalty box. Uh, well, and that's that's why I want to do Carl's Jr. and in and out together versus whoever wins this. I'll stand by your decision if you're going to, if you're, I, I think that's fine to go back and change whatever you had to say. Anyways, to my rankings, I think I got all that out. I apologize to Spoon Nation. I apologize to people listening to this podcast. Uh, it's a sad day, but. Anyways, I'll continue. And God bless John Gumberling. I think it's a shame what you did to him. But. He's a good man. Um, so, like I said, I got a Cherry Coke Zero at, with my five guys, and I want to let it be known that with my Shake Shack order, I know that these, I know that sides say on the sideline, but I just want to get it out there for the purpose of the of the tournament to let people be known that I did have regular fries, 
and I tried some of the cheese fries that Weiger had, and I ordered the shake of the week, which was a Mass Brothers mint chocolate shake, and I believe I got a chocolate malt instead that was I'm pretty sure I was it was supposed to be for Maddie. Um, and those were all really tasty, but they're not to be judged. Yeah, I'll allow it. Thank you. I got the Smoke Shack burger. I love the bun. I love the taste of the meat. Uh, it's well it's well seasoned. I would say, as far as presentation goes for both these burgers, that not neither is impressive, but I do think that Shake Shack has a better presentation than Five Guys. I'm gonna go seven for the pre- seven and a half basketballs for the presentation of Shake Shack to six for Five Guys. All right. Uh, the next category is condiment and bun. For Shake Shack, I'm going eight basketballs. Um, they, wasn't there creativity at one point? What the fuck happened? It is creativity slash presentation. That was a previous category. Oh, well, Shake Shack wins that too. Whatever. I stand by it. I, I, maybe yeah. we'd even lower the basketballs. I'm going to five for five guys in the last one. Sorry, Maddie. So now for Condiments Bun, uh, Shake Shack's going to win this one. Um, I'm going, hmm, eight basketballs, Shake Shack. And then, you're right. I agree with you that that the bun at Five Guys is a decent bun. It's I like a good it. sesame bun. Yeah. I like both of the buns. Mm-hmm. I like the bun at Shake Shack as well. It just it doesn't live up to the it doesn't live up to Shake Shack. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I think it's clear. Seven basketballs. Finally, burger taste, uh, which is the most important. I think I'm gonna go ten basketballs. For Shake Shack. Matching my score. It's a lot of basketballs. It's a really, really good burger. It's It's well seasoned. Five guys, you're really great. You just got outclassed here. Yeah. Seven basketballs. And then in your shitty new category, (laughs) let's say, mm, I don't know, seven basketballs for Shake Shack and five basketballs for five guys. You think you get more dollar value out of Shake Shack? Oh fucking a! Well, I guess it is. I guess maybe you say the corporate values of Shake Shack, the corporate ethics, because I know you're something of an amateur corporate ethicist. <laughs> God damn it! I'm saying who get? You know what? They it both gets six basketballs. All right, fair enough. And six. Just to, just to be clear on this, uh, the ruling was that uh, that last category is folded into taste, which also means burger or whatever. Um, so we'll be ignoring that last category even more than the other categories, which will also be ignored <laughs> before we send these burgers to the alien. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Mac from Mac and me. All right, so let's uh, so six basketballs apiece for that final category that Maddie has ruled as invalid. Um, all right, so we've got our scores. We want to shoot steam out of Mac's ears, <laughs> which I don't think happens in the movie. I think I made this up. Yeah. Well, whatever. Your your fanfic is basically canon. No one's seen that piece of shit. <laughs> um, all right. Let's uh, so let's talk about. Uh, let's decide. Uh, on the count of three, and Mitch, you can count us off, which one we are going to send, which burger, whether the burger from Five Guys, the burger from Shake Shack, we are going to give for, to Mac from Mac and Me. Uh, count us off, Mitch. Three. So I go down from three? Yeah, down from three. Three, two, one. Five Shake Guys. Shack. God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I told you not to do that. You fucking did it's it. It's a red card. <laughs> All right, get out of here, Mitch. Good. Get you know out of here. Fuck get out you here. guys. Get out See of ya. here. Um, let me just say this. Five guys, as Mitch is, Mitch is literally walking out of the studio. Um, oh, my God. <laughs> he almost tripped over his headphone. Let me just say this. I know there's a lot of five guys partisans out there. Your franchise got a raw deal in this tournament of champions. It had to jump through a lot of hoops. It lasted forever. It lasted a long time, and it lasted through some tough combatants and... Five guys, you can walk out of here with your five heads held high because you are getting the Tournament of Champions Heart of a Champion Award. What the fuck? For for your superior performance and your (laughs) out. The most kiss ass shit I've ever heard in my life. Congratulations, five guys. Uh, You should be very proud of of the run you had. All right, Mitch is screaming, fuck you, Weiger, off mic. Um, that'll do it for this episode of Doughboys, uh, this quarter portion sized mini Uh Until next time, uh, when we'll do a full size episode with Shake Shack versus Wendy's uh, for Mike Mitchell the Spoon Man, this is Nick Weiger. Happy eating. Feral Audio.
Hey, wrestling fans. And non-wrestling fans. Check out our podcast, You Should Love Wrestling, the show where we try to convince our friend Hi. to love wrestling. I hate wrestling. We talk about all the best and worst parts of wrestling. Like Stone Cold Steve Austin. Spills a lot of beer. Or Yoshiko. That's a literal sex doll that wrestles. All in an effort to help you love professional wrestling. Subscribe to You Should Love Wrestling on iTunes or your favorite podcasting app.